Welcome in. It is day 122 and you're speaking with the Meeples Champion. And today we're going to be jumping into a game that I was so excited to pick up just recently. It was a huge hit for me and my friends when we were stuck at home during COVID. It was top three games on Board Game Arena that we played. And when we started playing in person again, we all agreed we need to get this physical game. We want to play this in person, but it's hard to find. And when we did find it, it was so expensive. Well, as I mentioned to you guys, I had recently gotten a little bit of extra money and decided to invest a little bit of that money into the channel and to get extra games for you guys. Well, I just so happened to find this game and it was the perfect combo because I was willing to buy it and it was $25 cheaper than usual. That game was Stone Age. Now, for those of you who have listened to my videos for quite some time now, you'll know that I talk about when a mechanic is introduced or you know, when, a, when a, a game is kind of the origin point for a kickoff to other games. So when I think of this, I kind of put this in the category of Dominion. Dominion introduced the idea of a deck builder. This introduced the idea, not completely by itself, but was a primary introduction of the mechanic of worker placement. And unlike Dominion, where I feel like Dominion has gotten filtered out through the years, fewer people come in new to it, it's more for the people who started with it that get the expansions now. This game, even though it's not as available as Dominion, holds up so well. And the reason being is that its worker placement is not a classic worker placement, which is weird because it came out really as one of the first games, so in a way it is the classic. It's just this mechanic has been changed. In the current ones, you have a setup of there are spots, you go to it, you get something, and you do its ability. In this, all you're doing is choosing to place to a spot. And if you do, do you want to place one worker or multiple? And if you're going to your wood or your gold or your brick or your stone, there's a limit of how many people can go there. So if I decide I want to go to get more wood and there's seven spots available, I can put up to seven workers if I have them, but I can choose to just put one. And then when the next person goes, they're now limited by what spaces are left. You keep going around doing this with those four as your big options. Then you have the option to put one person down to increase your permanent food uh, storage. So it basically means if you have to feed five workers, now you have one of these and it means you only have to feed four workers every turn. You have another one that will, you use one guy on it and you can get a tool, meaning when you roll dice, the tool can add plus one to your die roll. And you have another one that you place two workers on and it will give you a new worker for the next round. You also have an unlimited area for food. You can put as many workers as you want in food. So you place all your workers, and when each person goes, you're gonna go in order. So say I'm first player. All right, you go first. You have to retrieve all your workers, and you choose the order you want them in. So if you choose to retrieve your worker for the tool, you now have that tool to use. But if you retrieve him last, you don't have the tool yet. So you have to be very smart about how you're doing this. When you retrieve from, say, the wood, well, if you put three workers, they represent three die. So now you roll the three dice, you add the, the number together, you, if you want to use a tool, you can add a tool in, you add that to the number, and then you divide by that number's location. So if you're doing the wood, the wood is a three, so you roll three dice, you end up getting a nine, you divide by three, that's three, you get three pieces of wood. If you'd rolled an eight, you could add in that tool to bring it to a nine. So you do it, you retrieve your wood, and then you move to the next location. Now you're doing your brick. In order to get your brick, it's a four for the division. For your stone, it's a five. For your gold, it's a six. That food is only a two. It's easy to get food, it's just food doesn't help you with anything other than making sure that you're not starving, which if you are, you have to pay it off by, for everything that you're starving by, you have to give up a resource or take a 10 victory point hit. Not easy. So you're gathering your resources, but you also can place your workers in other spots. Your workers can go below in one of two different lines of four. Either you can go to the four buildings on your left. These are, when you place a worker there, you have to have the resources needed to pay for it when it gets to your turn. And when you do that, you pay the resources, you get the building, and the building gives you a bunch of victory points. It's the most straightforward way of getting victory points. Or you're going to go over to your line of cards. These are set up that, depending on the spot you go to, the one furthest to the right is just gonna require a payment of one resource but then it's two, and then three, and then four. Now these come out randomly, so you might find a card shows up in one of these and you go, man, I really want that card, but it's all the way at the four. 
but you can wait because if you wait and people take the one and the two, these could drop down and now next round that's going to be worth two instead of four. On the flip side, you might find something's perfect for you and it's right on the one. I've seen plenty of games where me or somebody else pays the four resources because that card is so good for us. We don't want to risk somebody else willing to pay the four or getting ahead of us the next round to snag it. These cards are going to help out because you have an option for, well, you might pay one resource, but it says at the top you're going to get back, you know, you, you pay any one resource, so it's a wood, and you get back two stone. Well, I just massively improves that wood to a stone. Or it might say this is a random or a, a, a wild, so you basically get to cash it in when you're ready for any resource you want. Or this is going to give you extra food. Or this is going to give you uh, an automatic draw off the top of the deck for an extra card. Or it's going to be, you know, at the bottom of the cards, there's sometimes symbols, and those symbols are going to be used as making sets which pay out for more victory points. There are so many different ways, as well as one that says, hey, you're going to roll, you know, number of players. So you're playing a four-player game, you're going to roll four dice. Each die has a number associated, you know, for the pips that goes to a chart on the card saying, okay, well, you could get a wood, you could get a brick, a stone, a gold. You could also get an increase to your tools or you get an increase to your food resource permanently. And when you roll, you pick first, but now everybody else gets it. So it might be worth going because you really need a specific thing. It's not available anywhere and you know you can have a chance at rolling it there. And by being first, if you only roll one of them, you get it. Or you might say, I don't want to do it at all because somebody's going to have to use a person there and I'm going to get a chance at it no matter what. I get something. Even if all I get is a piece of wood, I get something. So lots of options. The game is packed full of stuff. And you really play this game out until either you can't fill the row for your cards or you can't fill the roll for your buildings. If either of those occur, game ends. Why don't we jump in, let's talk our seven categories and see where this game actually lands though, because this has definitely got a lot going for it. I love the art on this box. I mean, I think this is one of those games that still stands out today, and it's an older game. And yet I love this box art. It is, for me, a classic box art. It's one that attracts all eyes. It's so good. And it gets backed up by a game that, whether it's the player boards individually, or your group board, or your cards, it all is great art. It's a big thumbs up. I have to give credit for having a pretty good setup for the resources here. You've got a boatload of wooden meeples, wooden resource pieces for your wood and your brick and your stone and your gold. You've got a, a, your, your cards are really nice. Your little cardboard pieces for your tools are really good and for your individual buildings are really nice. The cup looks great and feels great. I have not played the physical game enough yet to see this, but I've been told that the cup can get a little bit of a smell to it. Uh, probably makes sense because it's kind of a leather cup. I think it's a great resource so far for this game. I'm going to have to see in the long run where this lands because I haven't played enough to really see if that happens. That could be an annoyance, but I've been told by people who have dealt with that that it doesn't ruin the game. It's just one of those things that's kind of a, a you know, you kind of laugh about it when you roll. You know, it's just a little bit of a smell of that. We'll see if it runs into there down the line, but for now I've had no issue. Thumbs up. Price. So this game, oi, oi, oi. I took a long, before we played it on Board Game Arena, I was trying to find this game for years. Now this game is not available in a Target, in a Barnes & Noble, in a Walmart. You're going to find it, if you're lucky, in one out of five board game stores. And when you do, it's going to be like $75 for the base game. It's too much. It's way too much. I put it off for years. It wasn't until I was willing to pay the money because I just so happened to, to get a little extra cash and wanted to get some specific games that I finally found it for 50 and it was just pure luck but you're not going to find this for 50 very often because you're only going to get that a if it's in a store and b if the store is is the type of store that's not going to mark up the store I went to said we bought it at a price we weren't going to increase it because it became rare so we kept it at that price whereas some stores will increase it, and most of the time you don't find this at stores. You're going to find it, when I found it, it's because it was like PAX East, and they were selling it, and it was like 70 75 bucks. Just too much. So for me, 
too expensive, I think it's a thumbs down. Your difficulty, the game is randomized in the idea that you don't know what order the cards are coming out. You don't know what order the buildings are coming out. You're rolling for all of your worker placements. So you could do an all-in move and put, you know, your starting five workers all on, on gold and get unlucky and just roll five once. Or you could put one worker on gold because you're a maniac and roll a six and just get the piece of gold. Worst case scenario, you put the five, somebody else puts the one and they get a gold and you get none and you go, what just happened? So there's the random factor, but I think it's a, a, it's a mitigated factor. You're taking your odds and making the decision as to how much you're willing to risk for something. I like that. And I think that when it comes to the difficulty, this is not a hard game for beginners to play. I think kids, I think actually it is fun for a 10 year old. I actually could say them too. 10 year olds, beginners can play this game and it's just worker placement and rolling and it feels old school. But those experienced and expert players will probably crush them in the long run because well they may have a couple good turns or they may even win a game on occasion the people who understand how to figure out the math and how to plan out for the long term based on the randomness of what's showing up will understand how to take advantage of their resources i remember playing a game online where one of our friends decimated us because he made the decision in that game i'm never ever going to pay for food i'm never ever going to pay the resource for the you know the the basically the negative for if i don't have enough food and i'm going to get a new worker every single turn and he kept taking the negative 10 but what it turned into was was when he was ready he just started crushing us because he was like yeah i've taken six negative tens but now nobody else has more than five workers and i've got like I think he had like 11 or 12 of them and he literally was just dropping it out and being like everybody on gold everybody here and getting the most biggest payouts and none of us had been smart enough to realize what he was doing early to at least try to throw the hiccup of us grabbing an extra player once in a while and as a result by the end of the game what should have been him getting destroyed turned into him winning like 180 points with second place being at like 112 like it wasn't even close and we realize going forward, like, okay, we have to keep our eyes on this because it is a way to run away with a game. So difficulty factor is pay attention to all these aspects and those around you. It's a thumbs up. Replayability. Now, I don't know about in person with the physical game, but online, we would play this game two or three times in a night. And we played this game on average at least once, if not twice a month. And that was for a year. So I think the replayability is really, really big on this game. Once you've set it up once, I would assume the second game would be a lot simpler, but the game doesn't have a lot for its setup. It's a thumbs up. We already kind of went over the keys. I mean, there's so many options. Are you gonna focus in on trying to build the buildings? Are you focusing in on trying to make sure you have enough workers to get more of those pieces? Are you trying to get the all of your resources and build up a collection before you spend them? Are you going in on the cards, trying to make sure that you have you know, enough of your different things to make your sets? Are you trying to make sure that you always have fed? You know, if you go in early and you say, I'm gonna go between the card and in the, in the village and make sure I can get all of my workers set up so that they are pre-fed. And now for the rest of the game, I never have to get food. If you can pull that off in the first two turns, you could be killing it. There are lots of options. Again, random factor affects this, but it's also up to how much you're paying attention and, and not only to yourself and to what's going on on the board, but to your fellow players to figure out the right key for that game. So I think they're there. Big thumbs up. Is this game unique? This game is one of the oldest worker placement games out there today. It's hard to get your hands on. It's not widely available anymore. And yet, despite all my collection, I went looking for this game when I knew I could afford it. Because there is not another game I've ever played that can replicate what this game does. Now, I want to try the game Pillars of the Earth. I've been told it's really good and it's an essential worker placement game. But I don't know if that game compares to this one. I've never had the chance to play it. So I, I know it was right around the same time as this. My guess is, is that they kind of are just 
two sides of the same coin where both work replacement, they probably do slightly different things. And there's a reason why this one is still widely people trying to get their hands on it. And that one is just completely like nowhere. That being said, I feel like this game stands out from the bunch and it holds up for today. It's got to be a thumbs up. So overall, what do I think of this game? I think this game is an absolute, without question, must play. Go on Board Game Arena if you can, play this game. If you can find somebody with the game in person, play this game. I think you'll enjoy it. It's worth having a Board Game Arena you know, membership just so I can invite friends and we can play this game together. And on top of that, shift it over to the physical game. Listen, 75 bucks is steep, but I was willing to pay it when I had the extra money. Had I found this for 50, it would have been bought years ago. It just was too expensive for me when I didn't have the extra little cash to spend at the time. So I think this game is an absolute play. You don't have to buy it, but I do think it's one that if you're into worker placements or if you're looking for, I'd like some dice rolling, but I don't want those old school 90s dice rolling, that this is a game that you don't have to play it to just buy it and you'll enjoy it. But that's just my opinion. It's up to you guys to get out there, see if you want to play it in person, see if you want to play it online, see if this mechanic or this mixture of mechanic with dice rolling from back in the day fits for you and fits for your group. Well, it has been day 121 and we've been talking about the game Stone Age and you've been speaking to the Meeples Champion. Like, share, subscribe, and check down below in the description. I'll be adding in what I expect is going to be a pretty expensive Amazon link if you want to pick this game up for your game collection as well. Until next time, I'll talk to you tomorrow.